G'day guys, it's Luke here from Tech Blokes and iOS 13 Beta 2 is out and in this video we're going to talk about all of the updates, all of the changes and all of the bug fixes that Apple has put in place with Beta 2. Now Beta 2 is actually really stable, um, I've been using it for a day or two now and um, really Apple has done a pretty good job, um, battery life is pretty good, everything seems to be running quite well, I haven't had any app crashes or anything like that and uh, the whole experience has been really, really smooth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all of the changes, all of the new things that have come from uh, beta one to beta two. Now the first thing you should probably know is upgrading from beta one to beta two. You're looking at about a 350 to 360 megabyte update. And if you're upgrading from iOS 12 to iOS 13, you're looking at a 4.1 gigabyte update. Now the update from um, iOS 12 to iOS 13 is probably going to take you roughly two to three hours to do depending on your connection uh, at home. Now officially um, Apple has come out and said that the update for uh, public release for the beta is in July but they haven't really said what date that's going to happen. I would say it's probably going to be about mid-July if we look at um, all of the past beta updates. So one of the big things that Apple is pushing for in iOS 13 is a move away from 3D touch into more of a haptic feedback and long press on various apps. And the cool thing is, um, yeah, that works really well on new devices, but older devices like the uh, iPhone SE, etc., it's definitely gonna work a lot easier and it's gonna work a lot better. So essentially like holding will allow you to get to these shortcuts um, and it's just kind of rather than having to like push down into a 3D touch you can just press and hold and you get this nice little haptic feedback so that's definitely something that Apple's moving towards so looking at the notes in uh, the update for beta 2 it says that Apple has gotten rid of uh, 70 plus um, problems that they had in beta 1 so that's really good but the bad news is there's actually a hundred plus new problems coming out with beta 2 so Look, Apple always irons those little kinks out and by beta 3 or beta 4, most of those problems will more than likely be gone. So one thing I've already noticed that they've fixed is when you swipe down and you get this um, shortcuts menu, you can now actually get into your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings a lot easier than what you could in beta 1. Beta 1, you had to push like right in the center of this little square here to get into the sub menu, but now you can just long press Oh, let me do that again and you can get in and you can quickly access those menu options so that's really good and that works both on the Wi-Fi button there and the Bluetooth one so um, it feels a little bit more like Android where you can just quickly jump into d different menu options so that works really well you get a nice little haptic feedback when you um, long press there and um, it's much quicker to get into those various settings now so there has been some updates in the mail application. So if we jump into mail and uh, essentially what you can do, you can see I've got dark mode on, which I love, but you can now press the edit button at the top here. And before, you know, you just manually select the emails that you want to delete or move, but you actually have an option up the top here that says select all. So you can hit select all and it will select all of your emails, no matter how many you've got, even if you've got multiple inboxes and you can mark them, move them, or send them to the bin if that's what you want to do. Um, that option is obviously really good for people that have multiple email accounts and uh, I'm glad that they've, they've fixed that in beta 2. Now one of the issues that Apple did point out in the release notes is there is a little bit of a problem where if you're in mail and various applications, if you tap a link, uh, I haven't actually seen this yet, but if you tap a link, it can cause a bit of a bug and actually cause apps to freeze up and not respond at all. I personally haven't experienced that yet, but I have seen some other people uh, in the YouTube community that have noted that happening. So that's definitely something you need to look out for. Now there's a couple of new options inside the wallpaper area. So if we jump into settings and we go to our wallpaper area, you can see we've got this uh, dark appearance dims wallpaper and that depends on what wallpaper you've got. So if you've got a dark wallpaper, it kind of dims the screen. It's a little bit hard to pick it up on the camera, but I'll show you what that looks like. So if I go in and I pick a wallpaper that it's a bit darker, let's just go this one here, hit set. So when you go back to the lock screen, 
it actually dims the whole area. Um, it's, it's a bit hard to see on the camera, like I mentioned, but any of the dark areas become just a slightly, a little bit uh, dimmer. So I'll just turn it off. So hopefully the camera might pick it up. Okay, so you can see it's a little tiny bit brighter now in those darker areas. So that's a great option, probably will help save battery life. Now, one other thing you probably notice in the wallpaper section is when you go in and you select a wallpaper, you now have this new option down the bottom here. Uh, I'll bring it a little bit closer. You can see this little icon here. And what that does, it actually turns off the parallax effect so that when you turn your screen left and right, it doesn't give you that sort of shift, that motion effect. So if I turn that off, you can see when I turn the screen now, the icons just stay exactly where they are. They don't shift and you don't get that parallax effect. Now, I don't know what that's gonna do for battery life. It might save battery life. It might make, make no difference whatsoever, but um, we'll just have to wait and see. But it's really cool that Apple has given us that functionality now. So. Now in the update notes, there's also been some updates to the calendar application. However, I personally can't actually see any real changes. Everything looks exactly the same. Design language is exactly the same. Zooming in and out is exactly the same. Your today calendar looks exactly the same. All of the iconography is exactly how it was in uh, iOS 12 and even beta one. So they have uh, made some changes, but really, that must be very minor because you really can't see any when you're in the calendar app itself. Now, if we jump across to messages, there's a couple of new options in here. So when you jump in uh, into the Memojis area, you do have a couple of new ones. So the one I noticed was we've got a fingers crossed one, which is this one here. And we've also got a thinking one, which is this little guy here. And also like a, sh like a shushing one which is this one here. So a couple of new additions in there. Uh, I think that Apple's definitely going to put some more time and effort into emojis. Yeah, really cool. Really interesting to see what they're coming out with and they work really well. So yeah, looking forward to see what Apple continues to do with emojis. Now the volume rocker um, has made some changes as well. So when you turn onto silent, you'll notice that the little slide down comes from the top of the screen now, which is good, sort of stays out of the way. So depending on what app you're in, the volume rocker uh, will actually, rather than just slide out here, it'll actually come from the top there in the same location where you get that silence, this, this little pop-up come up as well. So it'll actually come in here. I can't remember what app it was working with, but as you can see, it's at the moment just sliding in and out from the left-hand side there, but the option to come down from the top is there as well. All right guys, so the camera app has had some updates. So in the portrait mode, we now have this high key light mono. This was actually demoed in the WWDC keynote and essentially it sort of gives you this really nice little black and white mode. So there we go, I'll just bring that in. And I haven't seen, our studio light is slightly different. You can actually bring that up and up the top here, we have some more options where we can alter the light in that studio mode. So for those guys out there that spend a lot of time in the camera app and love toying with different lighting effects, I think that iOS 13 is going to bring a plethora of really cool um, different effects in these di different um, studio modes and uh, really looking forward to seeing what Apple is going to do with this because I feel like they're moving more into that pro cam camera mode that we see on like Android devices and um, I think that um, Apple's sort of keyed on that they need to step up the game in the pro mode. Okay, and last but not least is Safari. So Safari's got a nice little option now where you can preview links. So let me just find one here. All right, so what you wanna do is you press and hold and you get this nice little pop-up and you get all these different options here where you can download a linked file, open a new tab, add to reading list, copy, etc., And just a really nice way to preview a, a link without having to exit out of whatever you were looking at. So I personally think this is really useful and I really like the haptic feedback that you get when you press and hold to open up that link. So if I do another one, you get a nice little haptic feedback just now. And then, you know, if you want to open that in a new tab, you can do that as well. So guys, the notes app has got a bit of a change as well. 
If you do use multiple languages on your device, you can actually have a preferred language for your notes to show up in. So I don't use notes, but if you were to um, have multiple languages set in your device, you can actually have preferred language that will always be like the default for your notes. And uh, that's just an option inside the settings now, but I unfortunately I can't show you that because I don't use multiple languages. That is something that you will find inside the settings for notes. So you can see I've just jumped into language and region. I've only got the one language set at the moment. But yeah, like I mentioned, if you do have more than one language, maybe English and Chinese or something like that, you would find the preferred language can be set inside the notes app. Now in terms of battery life, um, it's actually been quite good for our beta release. Um, here on the iPhone XS, the battery life has been about three to four hours screen on time, sometimes a little bit more depending on what I'm doing for the day. Um, on the XS Max, you can actually get you know, a little bit better battery life, but Apple is generally pretty good in my opinion with beta releases and battery life. Um, this device, being the, the 10s is you know obviously got the a, a12 chip in it so it is generally quite battery efficient but i'm looking forward to seeing what it's going to be like with the full release it might even tempt me to come back to ios for my main device but we'll just have to wait and see all right guys so just to recap beta 2 so we've got a lot of changes happening with the 3d touch apple's kind of moving away from that now they're moving into more of a haptic feedback which makes more sense. It's probably cheaper and easier for them to make devices without 3D touch. Um, we've got some nice changes inside the camera app. We've got a couple of minor changes inside the mail app. Um, we've got some uh, language preferences if you use notes and multiple languages on your device. Uh, we've also, there is one other change I forgot to mention, which is a change in the voicemail where you can actually, if you've got some visual voicemails, you get three buttons where you can play them, put them on speaker or delete them. But um, overall, uh, actually looking forward to beta three. Um, you know, like I said, there's a hundred plus different issues that Apple needs to fix with the new update. But overall, the device is really rock steady. Haven't had any app crashes, been very good with battery life. Only a couple of very minor things where different links aren't opening in certain applications. But yeah, overall, very, very good, guys. I'm really looking forward to beta three. Can't wait to see if they make some more changes, maybe to Memojis. Apple's definitely making a push to make it a more personalized experience with Memojis. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you drop a comment, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.